Hey guys, quick announcement before we start. If you haven't seen the Atheist Comedy Channel already, you really should. They've got a parody of the Atheist Experience, and the first episode right now features me. It's like you're getting two episodes for the price of one, which is free, which undermines the entire premise of the joke. Okay, this is getting awkward. Roll the footage! Well, now that the fun part is over, let's go ahead and get into the heavier part of the video. So let's say that someone tells you that unless you give them all the money in your wallet, they'll shoot you. That's a threat, right? Pretty obvious. You're being threatened. But there's an easy way out. Give up the money in your wallet and all is well. Not ideal, but you won't be shot. I think that you and I would still argue, though, that this is a threat, even though there's an easy option out. What if somebody entered your house then, and they told you that they're going to torture and beat you? unless you plead at their feet for them not to, in which case they'll bake you a cake instead. I know, it seems really silly, but now we have a stranger dichotomy of options here, where in the first one it was pretty cut and dry, in this one you possibly have an even easier choice to make. Grovel at the burglar's feet and get cake. Don't grovel and be tortured until God knows when. Are you still being threatened? Well, I'd argue yes. Even though the choice seems pretty easy on the surface, the alternative is still a threat. And since the alternative is part of the entire dilemma, it makes the whole dilemma itself a threat. Now, if someone offered you immortality, you, you kind of have to take it. That part's not negotiable in this scenario. But Let's just say if you grovel afterwards and swear fealty at their feet, then they'll allow you to continue as you were and keep groveling and worshipping them. If you don't want to worship this individual, they'll torture you forever thanks to your newfound immortality. Now, ignoring the fact that you might not want to act in accordance with what this person wants, since there is an underlying threat there if you didn't comply with their wishes, is the fact that they offered you an easy eternal life enough to justify the eternal torture you'll suffer if you don't comply. Even if it is, does that nullify the initial threat? Like in the first two examples, I would probably argue no. So if someone is a god, like Yahweh for example, and they offer you an eternity of either worship or torture, are you being threatened? Well, you're definitely being offered an ultimatum, and this ultimatum most certainly contains a threat, so it does in fact carry the weight of an eternity of torture all around. This doesn't really seem hard for me to work through in my head. If I'm being offered something at gunpoint, no matter what good I'm being offered, I'm still being offered it at gunpoint. Even if the gun in this scenario is hell, which is almost inarguably worse, it's still an ultimatum at gunpoint, and in no way is that not a threat. Now, does it make any sense as to why an atheist might reject the idea of a blissful eternal afterlife? Well, no one wants to be threatened, and if I granted that somehow your god were real, and he offered this type of afterlife, as many do, why would I think of this god as anything but a malicious, capricious asshole for threatening me with an eternity of torture? And now that we're on the topic of hell, I want to leave you with a question. Can you think of a single act that would warrant an eternity of torture? If the punishment should fit the crime, name one crime that would warrant an eternity. Billions of billions of trillions of infinite years of torture. In a lake of fire, mind you. If I murder someone, I should either receive the death penalty or life in prison or some other equivalent punishment, right? That's justice. If I steal from someone, I should have to pay back what was stolen and then some other damages and probably serve time to make up for what I did for good measure. That's also somewhat fair, right? I guess we can probably agree on those. Well, what if I killed a billion people? That's a huge number, but I should probably only have to be punished for whatever amount of time I stole from a billion people. So say, somewhere around the lines of 70 billion years. That's about that many lifetimes, right? Even with that, that's still not an eternity. And that's nowhere near the amount of time that you would be stuck in hell for the so-called sin of not believing in a dictator god. So, given that we've already established that a dichotomy and an ultimatum, if it carries a threat, is ultimately a threat on the whole, and we've also established that it's probably not exactly ever going to be a fair punishment to send somebody to hell, unless you guys can convince me otherwise, then really, is hell a threat? 
I would probably answer yes in every scenario where hell is offered to you as an ultimatum or a choice, it is in fact a threat. I know that the aspect of heaven is almost always offered as a sense of goodwill, but I'd like to point out that no matter how hard you try, you will never be able to remove that underlying threat of hell. If that threat of hell is underneath that offer, that means the entire offer, no matter how hard you try, contains the threat of hell. Meaning that every time a Christian is asking you if you want to be saved, or a Muslim is asking you if you want to be praising Allah, even though it's coming from a good place, and it's coming from a place of goodwill and charity, at the end of the day, it's still a threat. So, once again, I'll ask, and please let me know in the comments below, can you think of a single crime that's worth an eternity of torture? Usual links to Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and the like will all be in the description below. Until next time, guys. Insert end of video tagline here.